A nun had just gotten a letter from her family with a $100 bill in the envelope. Glancing out her window, she saw a shabby dressed stranger on the street below. Moved with compassion, she wrote, Don't despair on a piece of paper, wrapped it around the $100 bill, and tossed it out the window. The next day, she answered a knock on the convent door, and the same man handed her a fat wad of $100 bills. What's this? she asked. He said, Don't despair. Paid 80 to 1. Today's gospel is about faith. There is no need to despair if you believe with all your heart that God always wants what is best for you. Like the leper who knelt before Jesus and asked to be healed, we should always go to God trusting that our prayers will be answered. Let us pray. Oh God, your mighty power is always with us. Let this be the hour in which we remember your presence and recall whose we are. Change us with your holy word from a crowd of separate and lonely individuals who are seeking the way of Jesus Christ our Lord, striving to reconcile and outfit us with joy and excitement for a new day, a new hope. Amen. From Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 41. If you choose, you can make me clean. Move with pity, Jesus outstretched his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. The Gospel of Mark the shortest of the four Gospels is often portrayed as the red-headed stepchild of the New Testament. For centuries, scholars regarded Mark as being a little significant. There are many reasons for this, such as the fact that it doesn't contain the gorgeous infancy narrative that make up our present-day Christmas story or the magnificent drama of the final scene, or the dashling parable of the prodigal son, or the miraculous story of Lazarus exiting a tomb. And so, for a long time, Mark was neglected gospel, until now. Now we recognize what wasn't so well understood before, now we see the historical context in which this gospel was written and how Mark's gospel, unlike the other three, takes us straight into a world inhabited by demons and evil forces with which Jesus is constantly in conflict. The evil forces were those of the Roman Empire, Pax Romana. In fact, scholars believe that this gospel was written in Rome for the purpose of strengthening the faithful, the early Christians who were facing persecution. People at that time also believed in demonic spirits under Satan ruled the world. One of the main strategies of Mark's gospel then was to demonstrate two convictions. One, the emperor of Rome was not the Lord of the universe. Jesus was and is. Second, Satan was undeniably strong, but Jesus was the stronger one. From the beginning of Mark's gospel to the end, 
Jesus is presented as the Lord of the entire natural world. The wind, the seas, the skies, they are all under his power. He is also Lord, the stronger one, when it comes to the ability to heal all diseases and all illnesses that the world at that time had no answer for, especially leprosy. This plunges us headlong into today's gospel story. Leprosy was the most dreaded of all diseases at that time because it separated people from their family and their community and thus constituted a living death. It's remarkable that the leper, desperate to be healed, does three things, none of which were allowed by Jewish law. First, he approaches Jesus. Remember, he was unclean. He is not supposed to approach a rabbi. Two, he kneels down in front of him. And three, he begs for him to make me clean. The leper treats Jesus as someone with divine power, a power much greater than Satan and the emperor combined. What happens next is heart-rendering, one of the most vivid portrayals in all the Gospels of Jesus' humanity joined with his divinity. Move with pity, Jesus three things. You notice it's not ironic. Three acts, thus the leper does, and three acts is much by Jesus. First, he stretches out his hand to the leper, touches him, second, and third, speaks directly to the leper and orders be made clean. Jesus, the stronger one, has ultimate power over the most feared diseases that no one before has ever been able to conquer. And yet, he does it with the greatest sense of compassion and tenderness, and does it for the least of these the human outcasts, the marginalized ones of the community. This is why Mark closes the stunning story of the healing power with these words. And people kept coming to him from everywhere. And they still do. People of today still come to their priests, to their pastor, to the church, to the synagogue, seeking to be healed. They still do, especially when we see Jesus' followers, disciples of Jesus, doing the same as the Lord. With deep compassion, we stretch out our hand to the disadvantaged, the vulnerable, the poor, and we touch them and lead them to a place of hope and healing and great joy. Let us pray. Healing God, open our ears and change our hearts that we may humbly receive your word and be your vessel your channel of hope and channel of your healing grace. The work of healing is yours alone, O oh God. If we are worthy to be your channels, let it be so. May your word speak to us with authority and do what it says in our lives. 
Amen.